I don't go on Twitter that often, especially um, since like last year. I don't spend that much time on Twitter. But I found out through another Ace content creator that people were not the most um, accepting of an Ace person. And I wanted to sit and talk about it. I brought... I brought notes because it's going to be a very educational video. I have definitions. I'm going to link my sources in the description uh, that I used. Um, I got these because I was looking up definitions. And then I came home. I was watching the video because I watched it like twice. And got eight pages of notes. So we're going to do that today. But first, Hi, I'm Farron. I use the pronouns and I'm so excited for today's video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My social media is on the description box down below when you give me a follow. I also have a second channel that is more doll focused and other things that I collect, but right now it's just been dolls. Um, if you want to follow me over there and let's just get into it. Um, the vi I'm going to also leave a link to the video that I watched and I really enjoyed that video and that video kind of that inspired me to make another ace video so let's get started um now in this video um a news person I don't know I don't remember the name um, decided to interview an ace creator, um, an ace activist, I should say, um, Yasmin Benoit, um, who is a model, uh, asexual act, or ace activist, I should say, because she's arrow and ace, and also is a writer, author, and so in, like, the first thing that he does is defines asexuality or uses the dictionary and I'm gonna just read what the dictionary definition is and I'm gonna go further into talking about why I don't like it um, experiencing no sexual feelings or desires not feeling sexual attraction to anyone this one is Oxford I think he's Webster um, definition but it's around the same it's generally the same definition it's very similar to that I personally do not like the dictionary's definition of asexuality because it is very over it's over generalized to me it says like feels no sexual feelings, no sexual desire, we're not saying that right there is not exactly what asexuality is. The second part where it says no sexual attraction is closer to it. And so I'm going to give the definition what it means. Uh, Asexual, someone who does not or feels little to no sexual attraction towards individuals regardless of their gender. That's the definition and you see how it talks about sexual attraction um, and doesn't mention desire in it because sexual desire is not the same as sexual attraction and I have the definition of what sexual desire is because I was curious and to know like I like to have like the definitions of things so I can fully and understand what they mean when they say these things so this definition comes from Wikipedia Wikipedia um, is not like the best source. Well, I just wanted to get the general definition. That was like the one that I liked the most. I feel like best encapsulated the meaning. Uh, sexual desire is an emotion and motivational state 
characterized by an interest in sexual objects or activities or by a drive to seek out sexual objects or to engage in sexual activities. Now, what is sexual attraction? Because in order for us to know that sexual desire and sexual attraction are not the same, we need to know the definition of sexual attraction. Sexual attraction. Attraction that makes people desire sexual contact or shows sexual interest in another person or persons. Sexual desire is very vague in it, meaning like sexual objects could be media, whether it is, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna say spicy. So we have spicy videos, we have spicy books, we have spicy audios, we have spicy toys that people can be interested in or the objects or the activity itself whether in this active the spicy activities can be solo with a partner or with partners there's see how vague it is it can be so many different things sexual desire and while well, sexual attraction is showing interest in the act with a person with a specific person so they're not the same so asexual people can but not always will have sexual desire can have sexual desire it's very it's a spectrum and it fluctuates between person to person and you know so just wanted to put that out there first that desire is not attraction they are separate attraction is specific desire is more vague now people who aren't ace tend to see not experiencing sexual attraction as also feeling no sexual desire while some aces do feel sexual desire some don't or some feel little to no sexual desire and that is the only way to be ace and anyone who experiences even just an ounce of sexual desire aren't really ace and that is not the case because we know the definition of what it means to be asexual little to no sexual attraction regardless of gender to a per individual regardless of gender and while one may not experience sexual attraction they can experience sexual desire because again desire is very vague and it could be a desire to engage in the media or in the act itself but isn't specified to who while attraction is the who that you would like to engage in the spicy acts. Society tends to look down on those who do not follow the status quo and will not betray them the best in media. For example, we have the crazy cat lady um, who does not have a husband or kids and just has a house full of cats instead. As I watched this as a child, I would feel, I felt several different things. I felt bad for the old lady because people called her crazy for having a bunch of cats. And they, I also felt bad because they made it seem as though she was lonely because she had all these cats. And I felt sad because I didn't want her to be lonely. And I also felt sad that people would think that way about me if I were to not get married and I would have a house full of pets. The whole idea behind the um, society looking down on individuals who don't follow the status quo, there are two, there's technically three terms, but we'll talk about one a little bit later. The two terms we have is allonormativity and amonormativity. Allonormativity is the assumption that all human beings are allosexual, 
i.e. Ex that they experience sexual attraction to other people. And some examples of that are equating sexual inexperience with immaturity, medical professionals assuming that lack of sexual activity is a cause for concern, assumptions that sexual liberation means having sex, and not having sex means you are repressing your sexuality, and then also queer spaces and sources emphasize sex over other forms of connection. I think I ran out of space, so. <laughs> and then there's aminormativity, which is the assumption that all human beings pursue love or romance, especially by means of a monogamous long-term relationship. Some examples of that is assuming that everyone wants to get married and that unmarried or unpartnered people aren't happy or lonely like with our the case of our crazy cat lady treating romantic relationships as more important than friendships the structuring of society around married couples with like housing and taxes and the constant questioning of unmarried people like do you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend yet? Uh, do you want to get married? And things like that. Because of allonormativity and aminormativity, aces and arrows are very much underrepresented. And they, when it comes down to talking about protections for minority groups and especially sexual orientations, aces and arrows are left out of the conversation and left out of the laws that are meant to protect these individuals and so that leaves room for discrimination against aces and arrows with employment and housing and other laws asexuality was also considered to be a disorder in the DSM and it still is a part of the DSM in other parts of the world they feel as though it's a disorder and it is not and doctor visits like you go in for your, like your normal checkup and doctors ask about your like sexual activities and become confused when aces talk about their asexuality and that it's possible and has happened where especially sometimes aces don't know that they're asexual and at first can lead to not being believed if they do know or being have to having to go undergo various testing that is unnecessary to figure out what's wrong and can ultimately be misdiagnosed with a disorder. One of these disorders is HSDD, which is Hypoactive Sexual Desire Disorder, which is when you're not interested in sex, have no sex drive or low sex drive, and it bothers you. And this can be um, problematic if they are asexual and just and don't know they are asexual until later, um, because it's asexuality is not a disorder; it is a sexual orientation. This also like discussions of asexuality can also cause for well-meaning people to give their input. And well-meaning people aren't always as well-meaning as they claim. Now, fam friends and family who don't understand asexuality can have concerns because society, uh, amonormativity, allonormativity, can lead them to believe that happiness comes from marriage and having kids and all of that. And feel concerned that you won't find that same happiness because of your asexuality or your aromanticism. 
But people on the internet who do not know you don't have those same well intentions. They are convinced that they know more than you uh, about you. Like they know you better than you know you. And that is clearly not the case. They can say very, some very invalidating things like uh, it could be a hormonal imbalance or saying it's probably the medication you take it could be like depression like diagnosing you with these different things and to try to explain something that they do not understand asexuality is not a disorder and does not need to be it's not a cause for concern some people are asexual and others are not and it just is with not understanding what asexuality is people also have questions that come along with that like do you ever think about marriage and getting married and for the most part yes aces and arrows have thought about marriage with abnormativity and allonormativity it's hard not to i know i was 10 when i was like first started like uh, not really first but i was because i was thinking about it before but like really like starting to like plan my life out about getting married and having kids how many kids i would have um the wedding i would have you know <laughs> what i would wear to the wedding i thought i thought very intensely about marriage and having kids I've, I've thought about it and i'm sure other aces and arrows have thought about it as well and some in great detail we've thought about it before and i do want to add in that asexual people can get married if they wish aromantic people can get married if they wish if they wish there are allosexual people alloromantic people who choose not to get married it's not just asexual and aromantic people who may choose not to get married and have kids there are individuals who experience sexual and romantic attraction who decide not to get married just wanted to throw that out there aces and arrows have especially thought about marriage because of the way that society tends to center happiness around it and starting a family. There are more ways to live a happy life that does not center sex and romance at the focal point, or the primary focus. The interviewer also asked a question that I know other people have also asked and want to know, would like to know the answer to, and that is, don't you think you're missing out on a basic human connection? I just want to say, I personally don't think that a, pursuing a romantic relationship is like a basic human connection. I feel like it's a little bit more complex than that. Um, but I wanted to know what is a basic human connection? It is a deep bond that's formed between people when they feel seen and valued, according to betterup.com. Human connection makes you feel heard and understood and gives you a sense of belonging. Now, romance was not included in that because I, again, I don't think it is a basic human connection. While I do believe that human connection is important, there are more than one way of achieving that human connection that is not solely, it is not just solely romance and sexual relationships. It includes our desire for interpersonal relationships. And again, I'm gonna give you the definition of that but interpersonal relationships is a social connection or affiliation between two or more people it can be with a partner it can be with loved ones close friends acquaintances co-workers people you just see out and about or you interact with like the barista who you get your coffee from 
and it can be going back into the examples it could be intimacy now intimacy has more than one meaning the first definition of it is close familiarity or friendship or a, a closeness that's what intimacy the first definition is the second definition is a private cozy atmosphere which is not what we're discussing here and the third which is what people tend to think intimacy really is um, is an intimate act especially sexual intercourse it's not even like the main definition of intimacy it is the third definition so we are talking about close familiarity or a friendship when we talk about intimacy so the examples desire for interpersonal relationships desire for intimacy a desire to connect with others and be integrated into a group those are the examples of basic human connections so while there are more ways to have basic human connections society tends to prioritize romantic and sexual relationships more and they kind of have like the hierarchy like first it's your your partner and then it's like like your family and then like your friend you know like there's a hierarchy on who gets the majority of the focus or the human connection who gets more of the human connections and with people becoming more lonely nowadays the uh, pursuit of a romantic sexual partner is more uh, pre people feel more pressure towards it because it is like their one guaranteed human connection that they will have in their life and it your partner becomes the focal point of your happiness and later on your if you have a family your f that becomes like the center your inner circle of your of inter personal relationships and your human connections and then every other relationship you have becomes a distant second people should not feel pressured into pursuing long-term monogamous heterosexual heteromantic relationships and should be encouraged to pursue human connections with others because we don't do that as much anymore and the pressure to pursue these long-term monogamous heterosexual heteromantic relationships kind of insinuates that your life is essentially meaningless if you don't pursue marriage if you don't want to have the same things as society says you should want in order to be happy and friendships are seen as pointless or hold less value to marriage which isn't the same for everyone and it is okay for people to not want the same things as you whether that is marriage or having kids etc everyone should be encouraged to pursue long-term connections regardless of them being sexual or romantic in nature and should be a can, can simply be building a an emotional connection in any capacity it is not really healthy or helpful to only see emotional connection and link it to sex and romance when there are other ways of getting an emotional connection with the human being it's there's so many other ways of gaining that emotional connection that isn't sexual or romantic in nature so i kind of want to go into the differences between asexual which is asexual orientation and abstinence and celibacy of course i had to get definitions for you abstinence 
the act or practice of restraining oneself from indulging in something. Celibacy, the act of abstaining from marriage and sexual relations. So those are the definitions. Abstinence or abstaining and celibacy are choices that people can make regardless of their sexual orientation. You can be asexual and choose to be abstinent. You can be asexual and choose to be celibate. You can be allosexual and choose to be choose to abstain or you can be allosexual and choose to be celibate. Um, yeah, they are not the same thing because sexual asexuality is an orientation and celibacy and abstaining is a choice that people choose to make and you don't choose your sexual orientation. And I do want to add that asexuality is not new. It has been discussed since the 1860s. And I have some very interesting things to note. Uh, this is, again, this is from Wikipedia. Um, I just want to say that part. Uh, this is like ace history and i mainly want to like further look into ace history which i'm very excited about um so carl marie Kurlberg, carlberg first coined heterosexual and homosexual in 1869 and also referred to monosexuals and also for two monosexuals, which refers to those who only self-pleasure. That was like the first, that was first when asexual was being noted, and then 1896, Magnus Hirschfeld mentions people without any sexual desire and links the concept and to links to the concept of anesthesive sexual and then 1897 Emma Tross for first gave the first definition of asexual and argued that sexual attraction and a sexuality are not abnormal or exceptions to nature not nature's order and homosexual people should not be discriminated against and the state should take measures to protect people's rights to sexual freedom and also saw sexual binaryism as a moral moralistic position and not a scientific position so why does asexuality need its own category under LGBTQIA plus umbrella? Number one, asexuality is a sexual orientation. There's more to sexual orientations than being attracted to the same gender or the opposite gender or various genders. There is also the absence of sexual attraction which is just as important to take note of we are equally defined by what we are not attracted to as we are by what we are attracted to and the lgbtqia plus community includes all minorities that are affected by gender and sexuality um, and I added and romantic experiences and therefore aces and arrows are a part of the community because aromantic aromantics are really excluded from the conversations they're either lumped in with the asexuals or they're like completely disregarded and that's why I added that in there because they are part of the minority and the interviewer then says 
arguably it's the absence of a sexual orientation and shouldn't it just be like me a normal guy married to a woman and shouldn't it just fall under any other category does it have to be lgbtqia plus he said lgbtq i think i'm adding the rest of that acronym i first want to talk about what asexuality is it is a sexual orientation and it says the absence of a sexual orientation it's not the absence of sexual orientation it is an orientation it is the lack of sexual attraction so that wording is that wording is very important to note because it's not an absence of orientation but attraction and number two the whole idea of normal and his idea of normal a go normal guy married to a woman which brings us to heteronormative which is the concept that heterosexuality is the preferred or normal mode of sexual orientation it assumes that the gender binary that there are only two distinct genders the opposite two distinct opposite genders and that sexual and marital relations are most fitting between people of the opposite sex it creates and upholds social hierarchy based on sexual orientation with the practice and belief that heterosexuality is deemed as the societal norm like i got this from wikipedia uh, again but i went through the different parts of the article on hetero normativity and i do want to add that in this article again aces and arrows are left out of the conversation uh, or not included in the article of heteronormativity because aces and arrows are just as much affected by heteronormativity as lesbian gay bisexual pansexual and all the other sexualities Aces and arrows go against heteronormity just as much as the other sexualities that aren't heterosexual. And because of this heteronormative, they also face discrimination because of it. And I also want to say that aces and er arrows go against heteronormativity just as the other sexualities that are not heterosexual and also face discrimination against because of this. Heteronormative culture fosters a climate where the LGBTQIA plus individuals are discriminated against in marriage, tax codes, and employment. Heteronormativity considers monogamous sex with heterosexuals as good and the sexual act or individuals who fall short of this are as bad. Being in a hetero relationship is seen as normal and anyone who doesn't fall under that are considered abnormal. And number three, LGBTQIA plus is an acronym that brings together many different gender and sexual identities that often face marginalization across society. Yeah. that is why it needs its own category we're on the last page <laughs> we've made it to the last page <sighs> and the last question i'm going to talk about in this video is why should asexuality be considered an orientation because the absence of something is worth talking about and it's very different from having that thing zero is just as important as one and their differences are worth talking about and noting early research on sexuality even proves that asexuality exists and the distinction is worth taking note and lastly asexual people are not straight people asexual people have very 
different lives and experiences to straight people. And we navigate the world very differently in our existence. Our very existence is very different from straight people. And it is important to have the label because of those differences. Uh, but that is all I wanted to talk about in I'm pop and playing with a pop it. <laughs> um, oh my god, it matches my hair. It's cool. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. I literally just I first saw this video at five about five p.m. and I was at work when I was listening to it and i was as i was watching it i was like oh i need i feel like i need to make a video talking about this when i got home i started like researching on de make, researching definitions and writing a script i don't write scripts usually and this is like the longest script i've ever wrote for a video but i hope this video was helpful and informative for those who wish to learn more on asexuality and understand it better. I saw some tweets, I don't go on Twitter, but I, on the video I saw some tweets that I kind of wanted to talk about. Um, the two in particular that I wanted to mention was someone commenting under Jasmine's original post saying spicy straight which we know that asexuality and aromanticism is not spicy straight we know that <laughs> and someone commented that you're just gay you're just gay but boring and that's also not what asexuality is um asexuals experience things very differently from gay individuals and straight individuals. It's its own separate category with its own separate experiences and that is why it's not spicy straight or gay but boring. So I also okay, I also wanted to add in that if you see an asexual or an aromantic person one moment and they are single and then you later on see them in what you deem a sexual or romantic relationship and you're like see i told you we we're making it up for attention i do want to note that asexuality and aromanticism are spectrums and that they are individuals who while they don't experience the attraction do want to pursue the, the relationships and they are just as valid as those who do not want to pursue those relationships. There are sex favorable asexuals, there are, ace, there are um, sex neutral asexuals, and there are sex unfavorable asexuals. Um, all are valid, all are just as ace as the next and if one decides to pursue a sexual relationship, they are still ace. Same with aromantics. There are uh, romance favorable aromantics. There are uh, indifferent aromantics, romance indifference. Um, and there are romance unfavorable aromantics who do not wish to pursue romance. All, again, all are valid, and if you see an aromantic person in a, which you perceive as a romantic relationship, they're still a romantic. Uh, the one notable uh, cat subcategory of asexuality and aromanticism is um, cupio sexual or cupio romantic, which means while you lack the sexual attraction, you still desire the sexual relationship or you lack the romantic attraction but you still want to pursue a romantic relationship um so just thought i'd throw that in there as well i just wanted to cover the bases because people will say you're just begging for attention 
you want to be a special snowflake and things like that and because there is a spectrum a lot of people can become confused on why an asexual person is in what you deem a sexual relationship with another person or an aromantic person uh, pursuing a what you perceive as a romantic relationship with another person here i am at 27 and i want to give you the yearly update i'm still asexual i'm still a romantic and i have a question i have two questions actually one at what age can i firmly firmly say that i'm asexual and aromantic at what age am i allowed to say it there are some individuals who don't find out they're asexual and or aromantic until their 60s and that that could explain why it took them so long to find a partner that i or why they were never like i don't know i but they found out in their 60s do i have to be 60 years old to know that i'm still ace and arrow do I like uh do I have to be 90 years old and in order to be seen as a valid asexual and aromantic at what age I just I'm just confused and my second question is why is it that aces and arrows receive the question of will you change your mind or you're not old enough to know you, especially that you're not old enough to know when there are children people under the age of 18 who know that they are heterosexual why is it that aces get that question as adults when there are children who know that they are heterosexual i am just i just would like to know why is it that aces and arrows receive that that's another part of heteronormativity and aminormativity and uh, allonormativity where if you say you're ace or arrow they're just like oh you'll change your mind you'll change your mind you're you're not old enough to know how do you know that you're asexual how do you know well i lack sexual attraction to another human being so that's how i know that's how i know that i'm asexual how i know i'm a romantic because i lack romantic attraction to other individuals regardless of their gender that's how i know and it already took me to like my 20s to even know that so it wasn't even like i was a child and if you are a child and you figure that out early on good for you i'm not saying anything negative towards you but i'm saying that i was an adult when i found out so at what point am i allowed to say that i don't experience sexual attraction, don't experience romantic attraction, at what age? And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I want I would like to make another video answering those questions because I know that some people may still have questions. And yeah. But that is all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell to be notified when I upload. I'm trying to get better at this uploading schedule. So more videos are coming. And feel free to check out my second channel where I talk about dolls and other things. More collector focused. Um, Hope you have a great rest of your day, and until next time, bye!